Okay guys, in today's video, I'm going to be comparing a matte white screen with a gray ALR screen. If you are the person that sport a UST laser projector recently, this is going to be a very good comparison video for you. Now, just to set some context, this is a 120 inch motorized ceiling mounted matte white screen that I bought for around 200 pounds, just about a couple of years back. This is a premium Vividstorm S Pro motorized floor rising screen. It's a semi-translucent light gray ALR screen and it is very premium quality. This one was around 1300 pounds. So you can see the stark difference in prices right here. Now, if you're one of the people that's bought a high quality UST laser projector, that's probably half the story. The second half of the story is actually getting a very good quality screen to project it onto. Some people assume that a UST laser projector would be fine for a standard basic white screen. That is not the case and I'm going to be showcasing why. An ALR screen will give you the full complete setup for a 4K UST laser projector to give you the perfect home cinematic experience. Now, when you do go on the market to buy a screen for your laser projector, there's two different types of categories that you should always look out for. First one being the material. Matte white basic material, fabric, is probably not going to be the most ideal situation. And then looking at a very high quality ambient light rejecting screen like this one is also going to be very beneficial to get the most brightest, vivid experience from your laser projector. The second category that you should also look for is gain. Now, without getting too technical, gain is basically the measurement of the reflectivity of the light source when it hits the screen from a laser projector. You'll notice when you do look online for ALR screens specifically, they will mention the gain number. Matte white screens will typically range from 1.0 to 1.5. ALR screens will generally range from 0.5 to about 0.9. Now that number might be a little bit confusing to some people, but to give you some context, that number represents the ratio of the amount of light that is reflected from the screen as compared to a standard whiteboard. If you look at a standard white matte screen, that might be around the one to 1.1 mark. This one specifically goes down to about 0.6, but essentially what that means is this will give you about 60% of the light reflection that a standard 1.0 matte whiteboard will actually give you in terms of the reflectivity. A white screen that has about 1.5 will give you about 50% more reflection of light and brightness from a standard whiteboard. I'll leave a link in the description if you wanna read a little bit more information about how gain actually works. But this one down here is 0.6 and my white matte screen here is about 1.1. So those are the two main types of categories that you should look out for when you want to go and buy a new screen for your laser projector. But ultimately, how will these perform? So I'm gonna turn on my Screenio U5 from Philips, which I also have a review for. I'll link that in the description if you wanna check out more details about it. And let's go ahead and showcase in both very daylight conditions and when I make it black out in this room by shutting all the blinds and the skylight behind the camera and see how they perform in both of these screens. Okay, so let's start off with my matte white screen. I've just opened the keystone correction here with the laser projector. The first thing you guys will notice straight away, and I mentioned this in my initial review of my projector, this is very wavy. You can see the lines are not even straight. If you have a motorized matte white screen, which is hanging, or even one that's maybe floor rising, it will probably move around and it won't be completely flat. Flat surfaces are very important, so the material itself needs to be stretched so that it stays constant. If you see, if I move this very lightly, how much of these lines can get distorted? And you don't want this to happen because in most cases, no matter which UST laser projector you do set up with a screen like this, I'm pretty sure you're going to get a very similar kind of setup and it'll be very hard to watch all of your content when you know, most of the edges are gonna be wavy or they kind of stretch around towards the center here. So the tension on the actual material itself matters quite a lot. If you get this mounted on a wall with some metallic frames and it is completely solid, that might fix the issue of it being straight, but there's also multiple other issues as well when you are watching this, especially in daylight conditions. So if we talk about the material itself, this is a very cheap, grainy type material which feels like it's just coated with white and although you can't get any light from behind this to leak through it's quite a good solid strong material itself 
it's usually made for long throw lamp based projectors to just reflect onto this standard surface. For a laser projector, this is not great at actually reflecting the light back. And what's happening is when the laser actually hits the screen here, it's actually going across into various different directions. So towards the ceilings, towards the side, and it doesn't direct it towards the person viewing the screen itself. So I wanted to basically showcase an example video of how that actually looks in real life practice. So I'm gonna leave the keystone correction like this as kind of like the standard. Once I'll show you the comparison with the ALR screen, you'll see the slight difference. Now in daylight, you can obviously see it's still pretty clear because it is a laser projector, but I just want you to see actually in a lot of sunlight coming into this room, it actually does look quite washed out. This is not something you would find easy to watch if you are going to use this with a screen like this, especially in daylight. So you can see I'm trying to highlight some of the vivid colors in this demo video here. It's not shining through that clearly because the light that's being absorbed by the material on this matte white screen, it's just absorbing a lot of the lights that's coming from the laser itself. And actually you'll notice in the video, you'll see some of these horizontal lines just in some of those lighter parts of the video. That's also showcasing the material being not able to reflect the light from the lasers correctly and the material of the screen itself. It has those horizontal lines inbuilt into the grains. So it kind of shines through. As I was mentioning before, flat surfaces also make a big difference. And because this is not 100% flat, I just wanted to showcase when I do close this screen and I project it onto the wall and my shutters behind it, you can see the difference of what a flat surface makes. So let me go ahead, just close this, and you'll start to see it reflect onto the white wall. And then immediately you can see how straight the edges are, how cleaner it looks, albeit it's not made to be on a wall with windows right in the middle of it. But if this was a complete blank white wall, that would probably do slightly better of a job than a white matte motorized screen like this. But again, because it's so bright in here, you can hardly see all of the content and you wouldn't enjoy it. So now let me go ahead and close all the shutters, close all the light sources in this room and show you how much of a difference that makes on the white screen itself. Now, as the screen is coming down, just look at the comparison between the wall and this matte white screen itself. Highlighting even more the importance of a flat surface, regardless of whether you buy a white matte screen or an, even an ALR screen. And of course, the projection size difference that you've just witnessed between the screen and the wall, that's with the distance that the laser is actually projecting to. So you, there's a couple of extra inches behind the screen to go onto the wall. And this one, obviously, it looks much better because it's now darker and the quality of the laser and the projector itself is actually very good. But again, you can still see very faintly some streaks, horizontal streaks in this demo video, which I'm not that comfortable with, but hopefully that showcases the quality of a matte white screen if that's the route you decide to go on. So now I'm going to switch over and connect to my ALR screen. But while I do that, let's try and do half and half to showcase the difference. Now just look in the clarity, the quality, you can see the top part is skewing the video a little bit because of the curves and the material being kind of uneven in some places whereas this feels like it's more like a laser tv and that's got to do a lot with the material and the fact that it's tension mounted from behind with the metallic frames so that it makes it more flat one of the key difference i want to showcase between the alr screen there at the bottom and the matte white screen there is the viewing angles when you view this you can get up to 170 degree viewing from an alr screen and much less so from a matte white screen. So coming from this side, you'll notice the matte white screen is becoming a little bit more washed out, but the ALR screen is still very clear, much like a 
very premium TV. You can see the vividness of the colors, the contrast. It's just so much sharper on an ALR screen and that is exactly what you need when you do get a home cinema setup with your UST projector. So viewing angles is also an important factor to make a decision to buy the right screen. Even in here, you can see how much of a difference this makes. So now immediately you're starting to see the benefits of my ALR screen with 0.6 gain. This is the VividStorm S Pro, so definitely check out the link in the description to find out more information about this projector screen and any of the other projector screens that they may have that will suit your needs. Now you can see here, everything is a lot straighter in terms of the keystone correction. So when I go and calibrate to the exact size of the screen, you can see I don't have to worry about any of those wavy lines that you saw with the matte screen, but I've put the daylight back into this room. So there's a lot of sun coming through the windows and my skylight, and you can see the difference between the matte white screen, how much more clearer it is to see everything, to read everything. And what I'm gonna do now is showcase what this material looks like. You can see the screen itself is a kind of semi-translucent gray edged design. Now this fabric is specifically made to reject light. And the way this works is when the laser projects from the floor here directly up at an angle to the screen, that light and the image is reflected horizontally back to the person watching it. Compared to the matte white screen, that was going into all different directions. Ambient light rejection, the purpose of the name is that if you do have a lot of ambient light coming from various different parts of the room, so maybe a skylight up above, maybe some lights, some bulbs, some ceiling hanging lights, windows, daylight coming in, they all come from various different directions and give ambient light to the screen as well. And this rejects it. So now that you've seen that, let's just go in and play another demo in the daylight conditions. And hopefully you guys can see that difference. And then I'll also play back a demo of half and half of both of the screens in daylight, which we're still yet to see. Okay, there you go, half and half in daylight. This is where you'll see the most difference. You can see from the top half on the matte white screen how washed out that looks and then how clear it looks on the ALR screen. This is basically the whole concept of it. If you are going to buy a UST laser projector, then that's just one part of the story. Make sure you always look at the right screen to buy for it. Now, when I talk about screens as well and ALR screens specifically, I did mention at the start of this video, this was 1300 pounds, which of course is quite expensive for a lot of people. And you can even get maybe the three different lamp based long throw projectors for that same price. However, there are some very, very premium quality ALR screens out there. And I'm talking ones that are made of like crystallized fabric. I've seen one which is 100 inches on sale for about over 8,000 pound. For that price, you know, I've got this entire setup of this cabinet, the projector, this ALR screen for 7,000. Just that one screen being more than 8,000 pounds shows two things. How expensive you can actually get for getting a super quality ALR screen. And secondly, the difference a screen like this would make for a very high quality laser projector, especially if you want to show all your content in 4K and maybe even up to 8K. Now, one thing I would mention is if you're going to set up a laser projector in a room in your house which has no windows and any other light sources where it's completely blacked out by default, I've seen a lot of large houses that have home theater systems in a basement, for example, then you might not even need an ALR screen. Maybe just a flat white wall surface or just any standard screen would do a very good job because it will be completely dark and blackout. ALR screens are very good and it's in the name for ambient light rejecting. If you have ambient light sources in the room, then an ALR screen for me personally is highly recommended. And when I was doing my research to buy an ALR screen, VividStorm are the ones that always came up with the best reviews. And I can see why the quality on this is just amazing. So I'm super happy. And hopefully this answers your questions about which ones to get. If you do have a 
ultra short throw projector like this. And if you guys have any other questions about this type of comparison, as always, drop a comment down below. Make sure to subscribe if you like tech reviews, projector reviews, and everything that's trending nowadays on the market. I have new videos out every week and I'll catch you guys at the next one. Take care.